I hope you're excited. Because, like, I'm excited. Like, I've... I don't know how long it's been since the last one of these went up. I think it was, like, a, maybe a month and a half, maybe two. Um, in reality, I had uploaded... Uh, what had I uploaded? I uploaded the 1985 year in review. Uh, yeah, probably about two months ago now. But I was halfway through this year, maybe a month ago. I was in, like, September... Um, the last three months or so have been a struggle. Uh, I don't know why, uh, maybe just a bit of a passion loss, but listen, I'm passionate because we're heading towards WrestleMania again. I think that's kind of like the dead zone when you finish SummerSlam and you realize you got to do September, October to get to the November pay-per-view, which at this point is, uh, ooh the wrestling classic i think and it's not SummerSlam; it's the big event Ooh, you can see this show here i think this is my worst pay-per-view all year um we'll give hogan some props because we always give hogan props we'll give roddy some props because roddy had a fucking 98 rated match to kick off the show uh, and we'll give uh schultz some props because he put on one hell of a match when i left you last with this save we were in a very different world, and, oh, it's Jeff Nash. Uh, no, but you're going to see what I'm referring to very quickly. Um, this is a very different roster than what I opened last year with. Um, 1986 has been really fun. Um, not a lot of turnover, but a lot of additions. I've been trying to keep um, as many people around as possible. I think the people who have left have been like Ken Patera left earlier. Um, I think Dennis Condry is leaving because I finally brought in Stan Lane. Uh, Condry's contract came up about start of this month, and so I jumped on the opportunity to bring in Stan Lane. So I have the proper like mainstream uh, Midnight Express now uh, with James Cornette. Um, I think you're going to be pretty excited. Oh, I got very loud there. Apparently, I think you're going to be very excited to see what I have done. Um, I am at least. I'm always kind of excited with this save just to see what's going on um i should have talked more during this loading screen instead of earlier because now we're just gonna sit here mostly and look at this thing um no but as always uh i think i missed uploading last week because i wanted to get this done on the weekend uh if it doesn't tell you uh anything about me uh it's the fact that i'm recording this at like 12 15 a.m i should be in bed probably sleeping um but I'm not, because, I don't know, I am somewhat of a YouTuber, people tell me, so this kind of matters to me. All right, who's wrestler of the year? By the way, I do that live, so you can see my reaction. Uh, hey, nice, Hogan, awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, wrestler of the year, we got Hulk Hogan, uh, company of the year, we've got the WF, we've got tag team of the year, we've got... Uh, Genichiro Tenryu and Jumbo Surada. Match of the year. Hogan versus Bob Orton at the Wrestling Classic. Awesome. Very cool. Show of the year was WrestleMania 2. Awesome. Young Wrestler of the Year is Toshiaki Kawada. Veteran Wrestler of the Year, of course, is Antonio Inoki. Uh, Female Wrestler of the Year is Chigusa Nagayo. Most improved company is the WF. <laughs> Most improved worker is Ultraman. Manager of the Year is, of course, Bobby the Brain Heenan. Announcer of the year is Ichiro Furutachi. Color commentator of the year is Jesse Ventura. Referee of the year is Kohei Wada. Um, yeah, I think that's my worst pay-per-view the entire year. So, it's time to do what we always do. Uh, oh, Danny Davis starts promotion. The GWA, the Global Wrestling Alliance, is born. Awesome. I love new companies because it looks like the CWF is going to die. Ugh. Um, I don't like when companies kind of just die. What the hell is AGPW? Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling? Excuse me. I was going to say, I'm like, I'm signing him to a written deal. What the hell are you doing? Um, <laughs> booking position. Okay, they're going to keep their deal there. Ivan Putzky booking complaint. Fuck off, Ivan Putzky. You're not here to get over, brother. You're here to put over. Um... You want to take a look at the roster first? Also, our B-Show is now Superstars. I switched it up 
at the start of November, I believe. Uh, so we have superstars in primetime wrestling. Here, hold on, I can just show you that really quick, just so then you get a good look at it. Uh, superstars. Uh, primetime wrestling is our A show. There's a way to look at that, isn't there? Yeah, here it is. Uh, nope, that's the... Oh, whatever, just TV controls. Primetime wrestling is our A show. And our B show is Superstars. <sighs> Welcome to the roster. So, Adrian Adonis, we dropped... Uh, what's his name? God damn it. We dropped Dick Murdoch earlier on in this year, so Adrian adopted his adorable Adrian gimmick. He's basically never been in a program since dropping his tag team run uh, around here. Uh, yeah, you can literally see that I didn't use him for like another little bit. Uh, oh no, actually, he was here for some reason. Oh, Mania. Duh. And then after Mania, I think we dropped him shortly thereafter. Yeah, kind of around here. Um, Adrian's been a gamer, I think. He's had he's had a pretty like bad year win-loss-wise, but um, he's always putting on half-decent matches, I think. So he's a good hand to have around. Um, I'm not sure if I had Hokuto at the start of last year. I can check. I did. So... Hokuto, <laughs> last year Hokuto was my women's champion to start out, and then she lost to Mania, and she's my women's champion yet again here in 86. Um, I have a lot of faith in Akira. Um, her matches obviously aren't as great, but it's, I think, because of the limited uh, talent pool. You can see that when her and Wendy fight, um, they put on probably my best women's matches possible. Uh, this match was also fun. I'll talk about Misty Blue Sims here in a minute. Um, this video is probably going to be pretty long. Andre, we're turning Andre. I should put that there right now. Andre, uh, this is Mania Three. We're building to Mania Three. We're doing Hogan Andre. I'm just, I'm just going for it, uh, like we did IRL. Um, of course, I'll show you WrestleMania Two. Uh, I'll show you all of my shows. Uh, oh man, what the hell is Arn doing here? Huh? Um, Arn came over in a big jump. Let me just kind of tease it. Oh, uh, yeah, there was a big jump at one point. Um, Arn's come over. He's part of a tag team with another guy who made a jump, Tully Blanchard and the Brain Busters. Uh, and I'm trying to build Arn up because Arn is number one of my next big things. He's supposed to be like the next coolest person in wrestling. So I kind of want that to be Arn because Arn's awesome. Um, a lot of respect for Arn. Um, fuck yeah, you know, just, just fuck yeah in general. You might hear me click a controller off and on. I'm running a basketball simulation in the background. Uh, Barry Windham, another guy who dropped his tag team partner this year. Yeah, Barry turned heel. He joined up with Arn and Tully and Rick. Actually, he brought them in, the four horsemen. Yeah, I don't even bother to, to hide it. He turned on Rotunda, uh, turned heel met up with the horseman and he's kind of the job guy for the horseman at the minute um he kind of just loses matches before flair goes in and beats somebody like you can see that there he lost a br excuse me he lost a brett he most recently lost to jyd on the most recent show um and yeah he's he's in a decent spot i think uh big john studs had a quiet year really nothing going on with stud uh, I think his biggest program was... Yeah, I only used him in like 15 matches this year, which is wild. Um, I guess his biggest program was against Snook at the start of the year. Maybe against uh, Magnum Allen halfway through the year because he really did begin the rise of Magnum Allen. I'll have to show you Magnum Allen because Magnum Allen's something special. Uh, Heenan, he's a manager. He hangs out. He's doing good stuff. Is Brett a main eventer? No, he's not. Um, Brett is on fire. Uh, I don't think he's won a single feud, but he just keeps growing in popularity. So I just keep putting him in bigger and bigger storylines. I'll check his match history here. He's definitely, like, one of the best workers on my roster. Who's that 96A star against? Oh, when Piper beat him. Yeah, because Piper beat him back-to-back -back times, and that, he's just, he's make, he's becoming a star through, uh, like, jobbing, which is great. It's my favorite kind of star to make, where... You don't really have to feed anybody to him. He's making his own popularity through putting on great matches and people seeing that he's putting on great matches. It's awesome. Uh, Brian Blair, I think... Did I have Brian Blair at the start of last year? I might... Or at the end of last year? I might have. I might not have. Uh, I did not. I brought in Brian Blair this year, I guess. 
Uh, he's, of course, teaming with uh, his tag team partner in the Killer Bees. Uh, why can't I think of his name? Jim Brunzel. Uh, they're just jobber tag team guys. They're straight up jobbers. They don't win. Um, that's why they're here. Uh, I have Bruce Pritchard. I'm not sure if Bruce Pritchard was here before. I mean, there's no real way to tell. Uh, I guess I could do employment history. Uh, yes, he was. I brought in Bruce to sit on the bench and look kind of cool because it's Bruce. I brought in Bruiser Brody this year. Um, Bruiser Brody, uh, if I look at his title history, yeah, he won, uh, oh, where is it? He won King of the Ring this year. Yeah, he was the King of the Ring. Um, very, very good for Brody. Um, I wanted to keep him away from Puerto Rico, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Ooh, rest in peace, big man. Um, rest in peace. Um, match history. Uh, it might be a little bit tainted. But he did show up halfway through the year, put on some great matches against Hogan, two really great matches against Hogan. Actually, had his best match in uh, New Japan, which makes sense. Uh, and you can kind of see here his rise, him winning the King of the Ring over Tito, and then kind of being around, kind of losing sometimes, winning sometimes. That's kind of my role for Brody. Uh, he's a bit older, but I wanted to give him one kind of big shot at Hogan. As kind of a big summer feud. Uh, and I'm kind of sad that I don't think Brody was a thousand percent ready for it. He's definitely very capable, but if I could have gotten him way more over, uh, he would have been a lot better. Bruno is a road agent. <laughs> He's here, a road agent. Um, Beefer jobs to everyone. He's literally only here because he's mates with Hogan, and I don't want to upset Hogan. Uh, Buddy Colt, I'm not sure if Buddy Colt was here... Last time, I just signed Buddy. Okay, so Buddy came in at the start of the year. He's on the B team. He's on the B commentary squad with Vince McMahon. Uh, they have really good chemistry together, actually. So I think it's kind of a fun little dynamic between Buddy Colt, who's like, he's a former wrestler, but he's a territory guy, right? He's this very old-school territory color commentator in my head. Uh, and Vince, who's the big show business guy. And I think that there's um, a lot of kind of fun jabs back and forth between the two of them. Um, I mostly hired Buddy off the fact that he had really good color commentary and the end of his bio. Uh, the only difference between a baby face and a heel is the baby face moves forward and the heel backwards. And I love that line. That's just a, such a cool line. Uh, Kenny Devine is here. She's just kind of a member of the women's division. She loses. Chief J Strongbow is a road agent. Cowboy Bob. Bob had a program with Hogan this year, as you saw. Their match, literally one match of the year, which is awesome. Uh, was it in 100A Star? It was. I didn't know it was. Uh, but yeah, no, that was in November. Wow, that's awesome. Um, yeah, you can see Bob's kind of been back and forth uh, pretty much 500 year. Um, I just took a sip of water live. Um, I guess not live if you're watching this because, you know, you know. Uh, so yeah, he kind of bounced around, had a fun little program with Hogan. He put out uh, a 99 and a 100 against Hogan. Um and yeah, you know, Bob's always a great guy to have around. Um, I really like having Bob around. Um, he's a great worker, and uh, I'm pretty happy with him. Um, Cindy Lauper, I think. I think Cindy Lauper really didn't have a place when I started uh, in '85, but '86, she's definitely transformed. She's the full-time manager of the British Bulldogs. Who did I have them at the start of last year? Well, I brought in a lot of people. I think. Uh, yes, okay, I did have them. I had them very early. Uh, yeah, so I brought her in. She's been managing them. Um, it's been a lot of fun having them. Um, I'll talk about the Bulldog success when we get to them, which isn't very far. Oh, no, it's literally, they're literally next guys. Okay, so Davey right now is fighting Savage for the Intercontinental Championship after Dynamite failed to capture it. Um, so kind of, they had their tag team title run. You can see it here from November 85 to Mania. So they were the champions in the last video, and they lost them at around Mania. Again, I'll show WrestleMania 2 when we get there. Um, they've been really good hands to have. Match history, I'll take a look. You see he's very, um, you know, he's not he's not a great wrestler, but his best matches here have come in the last little bit. Um, actually, his best one losing to Big John Studd. Uh, and, of course, they're a great tag team, so it's always good to, uh, you know, or no, sorry, they didn't lose at Mania. They lost at the pay-per-view after Mania. Whoops. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk about that more when we get there. David San Martino, jobs. He doesn't do anything else. He just jobs. Uh, David Schultz did not get ranked, really, on the... On, 
Did he really not get ranked on like the power 500? Is that real? Oh, there we go. Number 21. I was about to say, because doesn't it typically... Oh, there it is. Why am I blind? Um, yeah, Schultz has had a fantastic year. I came into this year, and I think I told you guys that he was going to be my guy. He got a 100A star. He's gotten a 95A star, a 93. He's fought every single big face in my company, more or less. And he's put on a fantastic match with them. Um, it's exactly what I wanted. He's this rough and tough guy he's actually going to lose this upcoming feud against Bret Hart so I'm really interested to see what that's going to do to him um because it would be unfortunate for his like meteoric rise here like against Hogan and everything uh which of course got an 100 day star I think you saw that um but it would be really interesting if his rise actually he's been like 50 50 which is really cool because like he had a great year and then he kind of was just booked 50 50 all the way through um but yeah, no, uh, Schultz has been fantastic. Debbie Combs is just another random woman. Uh, Condry's on his way out. I don't know how many days he's got left. He's got two days. He's on his way out. Kick him out. If you notice, the Midnight Express. <laughs> because, uh, you know, I needed to make the other guys the Midnight Express now. Uh, Don Morocco has done pretty much nothing all year. Very unnotable. Um, he's been hanging around. He's been losing. He lost the entire year. He never won a match the entire year, and he's an upper mid Carter, whose popularity I don't think has been going down. It's been pretty much staying the same, which is really interesting, I think. Um, yeah, The Rock, he's kind of just hanging around. Dynamite, already talked about. He's a fantastic worker. I love having Dynamite, especially with Lopper as his mouthpiece. They're a match made in heaven. Um, they're such a fun duo, the two of them. Um, they works so well together he's such a good wrestler uh, i really love having dynamite uh freddie blassie he is the manager of greg valentine um yeah greg we'll get to greg when we get to greg oh there's this gene Okerlund picture where he looks like he's dying on the inside he's like hide the pain herald but it's like hide the hide the i don't know uh, nothing rhymes with gene um George Steele has been hanging out as a jobber. I keep waiting for him to retire so I can let him go. Uh, just because, like, you can see, right, that he was obviously a big part of this era, and he's very important. Um, so I was kind of waiting for him to just retire on his own or something like that, but just not going to. I don't know why. I keep waiting for it. Uh, I brought in Gino Hernandez because the JCP threatened to sign him full-time, and I said... I kind of want him. He's currently Heenan's, like, star jewel. You know what I mean? Since we're not doing... Uh, I brought in J.J. Dillon. You can see him down there to manage the horseman. Heenan is managing Gino as, like, you know, his kind of, like, flair-type character. Um, also keeping him away from drugs, hopefully. Uh, you know, rest in peace. Um, but, no, he's a great worker. He's a great on the mic. Um, he's probably going to be IC champion sometime in 87. Uh, we'll just see. Gorilla's our main commentator. He's great. Um, awesome year for Greg Valentine. Greg really made a believer out of me this year. Um, as kind of weird as it sounds, Greg totally proved to me that he is like this worker. Like, he's so, so good. He had a feud against Hogan in the spring just after WrestleMania. They put on some phenomenal matches, never quite getting that 100-rated match uh, that Hogan just does with people nowadays. Um, but genuinely, um, I love Greg Valentine. He's a guy who... He, he's an excellent worker, but I feel no pressure to make him win. You know what I mean? Unlike Brett, where he's such a good worker, but he's got tons of potential. I don't think Greg does. I think this upper mid-card spot is pretty much where he's at, but he definitely deserves to be that high on the Power 500. Uh, Hillbilly Jim has lost a lot this year. A lot, a lot, as in 18 times. Yep. Um, he's only ever won on the B shows, I think. Uh, he's a kind of just job guy. He's a brawly entertainment job guy. Uh, I don't think much of him, but that's okay, because sometimes you need job guys. I signed Honky, and I don't know why I signed Honky. He's not a good wrestler. He's hurt. I don't really need him. Um, so pretty much whenever his thing is up... I'm just gonna let him go. I think it's a year. I've, I don't, I've never booked him. I booked him on the main show once. He lost to JYD once. And that was it. I don't really think highly at all 
of the Honky Tonk Man. So he will be leaving when his deal is up in, no, no, when his deal is up in about nine months. Good God. Hogan is my man. Um, he's the top wrestler in the top company in the world. He absolutely deserves it. He's 39-0 and 0 this year, never jobbing anybody. He's 22-1 and 1 last year. Who the hell did he lose to? He... Oh, ooh, Snooka got, took a pin for him. Wow, that's wild. Um, yeah, no, he's all over the place. He's killing everybody this year. I wish I could have closed the year out a little bit better for him, but that's okay. Don't even worry about that. He's champion. He's going to be champion. I ha I plan to have him beat... Um, I plan to have him beat... I plan to have him beat Andre Mania, and then I might from there have Terry Allen win like the tournament or whatever for the championship because I do plan on bringing in Teddy and doing the whole like oh buy the belt angle you can't do that we're gonna have a tournament but I'm gonna do it a lot earlier so maybe in November or whatever we can do the tournament um no we'll probably do the tournament in summer we'll do the tournament in summer put the belt on Allen have him lose in November to Flair Go into Mania 4 with Hogan Flair. That's what I have pitched right now in my head. Because I think... What was originally Mania 4? Oh, Mania... F no, Mania 4 is Hogan... Why can't I not think of Mania 4? Because, like, all of the initial Manias are, like, good. Except for two. What is Mania 4? Because Mania 5 is... I'm going to have to look this up. Where's my phone? Where is my phone? Uh, hold on. I'm going to find it. <laughs> Where did my phone go? Here it is. Hold on here. Let me check for this. Um, WrestleMania 4. Because I know, sure as hell. Oh, right, okay. Four is... Four is the tournament. Duh. Why the hell can I think of that? Um, who the hell did Hogan face? Hogan fought... Oh, I don't think Hogan... Oh, because Hogan was part of the tournament or whatever, and it like ended in bullshit or whatever, because they tried to put Mach on top. So... We'll still probably build a five, being Hogan Mach. Um, but yeah, uh, Putski has done nothing. J.J. Dillon is the manager for the Horsemen. Uh, Jake Roberts was brought in. He's kind of working his way up slowly while not winning very much. Uh, look, he's already an upper mid-carder. It works, folks. It works. Um, I do plan on him having a feud with Hogan at some point for the belt. Um, one he will probably lose. Uh, that would be after Mania 4, when Hogan wins the belt back. Um, James Cornette, yep, manager, Jerry Briscoe, hasn't wrestled much this year at all, Ventura is our main, uh, color com, talked about Jim Brunzel, uh, Nightheart's in the tag team with Brett, he, they didn't have, an, they didn't have very many matches this year, mostly because Brett's kind of been off on his own, uh, being a single star, uh, Snooka, I hate, and I wish I could job him out to the end of Oblivion, but they just keep making him, <laughs> be present and he has really good matches which upsets me uh judy martin is you know there uh jyd i accidentally made jyd i think i mentioned that on my last uh video or whatever that i accidentally made jyd somehow um it must have been i don't really know what the hell must have done it but at some point in here he got like over enough to where he was a main eventer so he was just kind of a main eventer <laughs> this whole year he's kind of won a whole bunch lost sometimes uh it's been a good little you know go around cat larue came in this year as kind of my replacement for hokuto as the main kind of uh villain woman uh she never beat richter though um so yeah uh coco beware came in as a jobber uh unlike uh unlike honky tonk i like coco i think he's got energy to him got a charisma to him so i keep him around as a job guy uh leilani kai doesn't do anything Lord Alfred Hayes does not do anything. Uh, Lou Albano manages Mike Rotunda. 
Yes, I knew that. <laughs> Mike Rotunda, ever since kind of splitting off, has become somewhat of a jobber to the stars. He's still in that kind of mid-card range, uh, but he puts on really damn good matches, so I can't ever, like, not... Oh, that's not where I wanted to go. Abort. Uh, he still puts on really good matches. Like, he's his best match here was against Roddy Piper on the Go Home Show. Um, he's kind of been pretty great this whole year or so. Um, so, you know, it's always great to see. Uh, Elizabeth, of course, managing Macho Man. Misty Blue Sims was interesting, because she did, she did, like, Playboy and got really over, so I instantly signed her to be kind of, like, the other face woman. You can see it there. The other face woman in the women's division. Uh, and she's done a really good job at it, actually. She's a shockingly competent wrestler, like you can see here. Um, of course, she's in there with people who are better than her, for the most part, but she's holding her own, um, and I appreciate, you know, her being around. Uh, she really helps kind of free up my booking a little bit for the women. Uh, Fuji is still managing Volkov, Morocco, and the Sheik. Uh, Volkov and the Sheik right now are fighting for the tag team championships against Power Team. Ah, Yeah, Warrior and Sting are tag team champions. I'll talk more about my thoughts on them when I get to them. Uh, Patterson's there. Paul Orndorff has had an interesting year. He feuded with Hogan for a bit, but for the most part, he hasn't done anything really interesting. Um, he's had some quite good matches, though, um, and I'm very happy to have Paul around. Uh, you can see kind of all around. He's he's a winner. That's what he is. He's a, he's a winner. He's a great wrestler. You can see his matches. Oh, he made, I'm sorry, he had the star-making feud against Terry Allen that went two pay-per-views, I believe. Um, it was, oh no, sorry, it went three. It was phenomenal. These guys killed it. They had like a 99 braided match, a 94 and a 96. And when we get to Terry Allen, you'll be able to see his popularity, and that's, mo for the most part, uh, due to Paul Orndorff. Uh, Randy Savage has been Intercontinental Champion since WrestleMania. I plan on having him hold it till WrestleMania, where he's going to fight Ricky Steamboat. Um, I do want to do that match. It's a good match, IRL, so I just want to do it again. Absolutely no questions asked. Uh, he's still just upper bid. Okay. Uh, Ric Flair came in during the summer. He's hurt right now, so I don't have him working much. I think he's had maybe a match. I think a match since coming over. Yeah, a match since uh, the start of August or so when he jumped ship to us here in the WF. Um, and that's because he's injured. He's got a uh, herniated disc, and he's still going to be suffering from that for quite a while. Uh, I think I can check on my medical uh, about three months. So just before, just after Mania, I think. Because, yeah, I think just after Mania, he's going to be healed up, which kind of sucks because I would have loved to have a big match with him at Mania. It does affect his performance quite a bit, uh, which sucks. He gets like 60, he got like a 66, the match against Brett, and I really wanted him to like totally kill it because it was against Bret Hart, right? Like, whoa, um, that's a big deal. Uh, but I guess not to be right now. Uh, Rick Martell I brought in to be Tito's partner after the split. Uh, after the split. No, nobody was Tito's partner beforehand. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no, Martell came in. He's Tito's partner right now. Strike Force. I need another face tag team uh, with uh, USA, uh, the US Express splitting up. Um, Ricky Steamboat is incredible. He's the best worker in the world. Like, no questions asked. He's the best worker in the world. I'm going to show you his skills right now. He is the best worker in the world. Like, undoubtedly. There, there's nobody better. Um, he is the greatest pro wrestler alive. 54 is a disrespect to him. He's so, so good. Um, Rob Heaton came out of nowhere. He's an upper mid Carter. He's been tagging with Condry for most of the year, but now he's going to be teaming with Lane this year. I hope to get them back in the tag title mix once we kind of cool down the uh, power team uh, thing because I do plan to have power team lose the tag team titles at WrestleMania to the Brain Busters. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be a fun little event. Uh, Roddy's our number two heel in the company still, um, even though Flair is a coming for his spot. Uh, you can check his match history. Uh, he's the number three worker in the world, according to Power 500. He His only losses are to Hogan and Flair and Andre into... Oh, Hogan and Flair, Andre, and Hogan and Allen. So you can kind of see uh, what level he's operating at right now. Uh, he had a 99 rated match against Junkyard Dog. Um, Piper is fucking great, and I really do appreciate him being around. 
uh, Slick I brought in to manage the Honky Tonk Man and then realized, wait a minute, I hate the Honky Tonk Man. Fuck you. And so I kind of just have Slick. <laughs> uh, Stan Lane, I literally just brought in. He's been here for like four weeks, three weeks. Um, he's coming in. He's pretty much an enhancement talent popularity wise, but he will not be, of course. He'll be winning matches. Uh, so, you know, he's a good little guy to have. Uh, Steve Lombardi, jobber, supreme, sting. I love where Sting's gone in this past year. He's grown so, so much. He's an upper mid-carder now. I think when you guys saw them last, they were, like, just lower mid-card guys. Um, Sting and Warrior are my tag team champions. They're phenomenal. They kill everybody. 44 wins, one loss. And that sole loss is to the team that they were going to face the next night. Yeah, their only loss came to Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov, and then they avenged that loss later on that very week. Um, him and, uh, him and Warrior are phenomenal, uh, and I'm so, so proud of them coming so, so far so early. They're great at really everything. On the mic, they're getting better all the time. I've stopped rating them on Menace all the time. They're now rated on Entertainment. They're entertaining guys. My number two baby face in the company right there, Terry Magnum Allen. Um, Allen is the fucking man. He's just the fucking man sometimes. He's an absolute killer in the ring. He's over. He's cool as fuck looking. He's just my guy. Like, I'm putting the belt on him. Like, get that straight. He's going to be the guy who wins the tournament instead of Savage. That's how much I love this man. He's so good. I'm so, so upset that in real life he got injured and we never got to see how good he could have been because I genuinely believe that had, like, Magnum, Magnum TA, had he have, like continued to wrestle into the late 80s man like wcw would have been so much better for it because there were so many guys so many top possible guys if you look back at wcw that it just wasn't one guy um putty talks about this all the time where to be a true alternative to the wf to the wb you can't just build around one guy you have to have a core of guys like you think right hogan austin maybe the rock but not really he was never really pushed as that guy um, like Hogan, Austin, um, Cena, they're all these top guys. They're, they're untouchable, right? Like nobody can beat them. Uh, and when they do, it's a big moment. Um, the WCW had an interesting situation where they could have had Flair, Sting, Allen, Rhodes, um, Terry Funk for a little while, um, Arn, they could have had all of these different guys possibly be their number one guy, and they kind of just never did it. It kind of never panned out, especially in Magnum's case. Uh, but I really do believe that WCW would have been a lot bigger of a threat much earlier um, if they had Terry Allen as, like, a predominant uh, figure. Moolah is still here. I keep waiting for her to retire so I can make her a road agent. She just won't. Uh, Shiki Baby is kind of having his last big run. He's still a phenomenal worker. Uh, it's just I really don't have the time or space or patience for him uh the red rooster is a total jobber tim white's a ref tito i talked about tito already tag team guy kind of just a singles jobber most of the time jobber to the stars tony atlas i don't like tony atlas but he for some reason gets good matches out of people tony gray sucks uh no tony gray doesn't suck he's just a jobber he just doesn't win um tully is awesome i really do like tully quite a bit i think he should be an upper mid card shouldn't he yeah he should um Tully is a phenomenal worker. He gets it. He's Arn's tag team partner. They're great. Uh, Vicky Williams is just a random woman. <laughs> uh, me, of course. Vince McMahon. I am Vince McMahon. Um, Warrior, who's way more over than Sting. He's definitely the guy who's like pinned as the top dog. Now, let me talk to you guys about this. Okay, this is my big crazy idea. Mania 3, we're going to have Power Team lose the tag team titles to... Um, the Brain Busters. Then I'm going to have Warrior and Sting get upset about it and go and find themselves. And they're going to go on a trip to Egypt. They're in Egypt. They're going to find a pyramid imbued with the power of the Egyptian gods. They're going to turn Jim Warrior Hellwig into the ultimate warrior and they're going to imbue Sting with his namesake and imbue him with the power of the scorpion. <laughs> I hope I hope you guys enjoy my fucking garbage because that was one of my favorite things I came up with this entire year. Uh, Wendy Richter is like the Hulk Hogan of our women's wrestling. So yeah, you know. Um, 
Look at our title history really quick. Hogan's been champion the whole time. Uh, IC belt went from uh, Steamboat to Savage this year. Savage been a hold of it. We saw that Brody won the King of the Ring. Women's belt has jumped from Richter to Hokuto. Oh, sorry. Kat LaRue did win it and then just immediately dropped it back. And now it's back on Hokuto. World tag team titles have jumped around probably the most. Uh, from Murdoch and Adonis to Rotunda and Wyndham to The Sheik and Koloff to The Bulldogs to the Midnight Express, and finally to Power Team. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of only one reigns going on here. Uh, I think that's kind of awesome in a lot of ways. Um, you could say that that's maybe not necessarily correct, but I think it's awesome. I think it's super fucking cool to just jump belts from people. Um, you can see our popularity really quick if you want. We're doing really well. Uh, I will show you the WrestleMania 2 card because I think it's the most important card of the year for us. Uh, what I did at Mania 2. Where are you, Mania 2? Here we are. WrestleMania 2. Uh, Hoga Mania 2. Um, Mania 2 is actually a really tight card. I really didn't fuck around on that card. Uh, it had everything that it needed to. Um, yeah, you can see it right there. That big, awesome main event. I love the hell out of it. Um, it's actually held in the same place the most recent thing was, in the Southwest at the Reese Eckless Coliseum. Uh, Eccles, SLs, I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. That's okay. Don't even worry. Don't even trip, dog. Let's do my favorite thing first, though. Let's go take a look at the new workers. Oh, that's not what you hit. You hit that button. <laughs> I swear I'm smart. I swear I play this game, like, all the time. I literally am playing this save in my spare time. 1987, January, uh, new workers. We've got Cannonball Grizzly. Why do I know that name? Why do I know Cannonball Grizzly? PN News. That is, I actually do know that. Because he's a white rapper. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Okay, Botswana Beast. Isn't that like a rip-off Kamala? Yeah. He's just a rip-off Kamala. <laughs> uh, oh my god, Eddie. 19-year-old Eddie Guerrero has arrived, man. I'm going to shortlist him just because, you know, fuck yeah, Eddie. <laughs> uh, Heidi Lee Morgan is some woman, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Conan. Holy shit, Conan and Eddie debut in, like, the same time span. That's awesome. Shortlist Conan. Um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Conan's a fucking animal, yo. Um, Major Tanya. Uh, <laughs> what, she's just Lana? Like, um, she seems like kind of garbage, actually. So, moving forward. Marcus Laurinaitis. Oh my god, he is Joe and John's brothers. Holy shit. He is literally... He's literally... Oh my god, I didn't even know that. I didn't know they had another brother. Okay, Johnny Ace exists, so that's really fucking funny, actually, that he's not related to him for some reason. Uh, Sid Vicious. I don't like Sid that much, but he's fucking scary. So I might shortlist him. Uh, Vladimir Petrov is just some guy, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, let's look at the other companies in the world. Um, the number two company in the world, I do believe, is JCP. Yes, they are. Okay. It's been a really good year for JCP, despite the fact that they, like, overturned their roster halfway through the year. You can see their top guys. Uh, it's Dusty, Harley Race, Sergeant Slaughter, Terry Funk, and Jerry Lawler. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very, um, dynamic, I guess is the best word. Their top 100 events, their best show was an 83, so you can see they're clearly number two. Their best match was a 91, in which Terry Funk defeated Harley Race. Uh, oh, wait, no, that's... Hold on, I'll make sure it's only this year. Okay, so was that still their best show? It was, okay, it doesn't matter. Um, their top attendance was 18,000 people. Their best buy rate was a 0 0.16. Oof, God, what the fuck? Um, that's apparently all that we've got for that. Um, you can see kind of their alumni, a lot of people leaving just to go wherever, but some people jumping ship. Uh, the current NWA United States Heavyweight Champion is uh, Stan Hansen. 
Uh, wow, oh my god, Terry Funk had 30 fucking defenses. Stan Hansen had 33 fucking defenses. This belt is the fucking workhorse belt, man. Uh, except for you, Manny Fernandez, fuck you. Um, oh, because they had to take it off of Gino really quick, because I grabbed him. They were just like, ah, oh, Manny, on to Stan. Um, Lasertron, who's Lasertron again? Oh god, it's Hector. Oh no, poor Hector. This belt's a fucking shit show. I don't even know why the fuck it exists. Um, it's fucking dumb. And I think the world television title, uh, yeah, it's currently held by Buzz Sawyer. Um, Ron Bass had it for like one second. They've kind of just been throwing it on dudes and making them defend a whole bunch. I don't know why. Did Ivan Koloff leave at some point? Weird. Um, their Hall of Fame has nobody in it. Nobody in it. Um, they have Hawk and not Animal because Animal got hurt halfway through this year. He like badly damaged his neck or something like that. So I'm kind of waiting for him to come back and then I could bring the Road Warriors in if I really wanted to. Um, I do want to check out the NWA though because they've got, uh, oh, where the fuck am I going? Here we are. The NWA because they're, you know, the head honcho right now. Not really, but, you know, they're, they're the second. They're the alternative. They're the alternative, more or less. Uh, Bob Backlund is the current NWA heavyweight champion of the world. Um, went from Ric Flair to Mike Miller to Kevin Von Erich to Rip Oliver to Jimmy fucking Valiant. And finally on a Bob Backlund. This belt uh, is defended a lot, actually, by John Cortez. Uh, where's John Cortez from? What company is he in? Oh, he's a... Uh, it's a UK guy. Cool. Uh, and the World Tag Team Champions are Ron Garvin and Dino Bravo, who are actually like a tag team. Yeah, they're Club Enigma 2000, which I fucking love because they're just like two random fucking guys. Because I don't know actually if they were like actually like dudes who teamed up. I don't think that they were. I think that they might have been for like, oh, they, yeah, they totally are though because they're both Canadian. I Because they came in with Earthquake, I think. Uh, rubbish Ronnie Garbage. Yeah, wow. Um, I don't know why the fuck that never clicked with me. Um, the AWA is the 10th in the world. I'll do my best to look at New Japan. I don't know the best at New Japan in this time period. Um, the IWGP was most recently won by Tatsumi Fujinami. The IWGP World Heavyweight Champion is Ricky Choshu. Choshu? Choshu? Um, Rick Martel was the IWGP champion when I snapped him up. That's, that's fucking wild, yo. Um, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion right now is East... Isamu Turan Turanashi? Turanashi, I guess. Um, Kendo Nagasaki 2 and Mr. Pogo are the tag team champions of the world currently. Uh, the Super Great Tag Cup was run by Club Lenegua 2000, Ron Garvin and Dino Bravo. The Super J Cup was won by Tatsumi Fujinami. Um, they're most likely the second company in the world right now, but they call it the third because, I don't know, they're stupid and kind of racist in DW, where it's like, America means way more, um, I think All Japan is the fourth, aren't they, yep, we'll quickly try to go through them, um, uh, the AJPW All Asia Tag Team Champions are Tommy Rich and Toshiaki Kawada, the All Japan Pro Wrestling Top Contender Championship is a belt that they randomly made, I guess, for some reason, um, it went from Saito onto Mark Rocco, um, the All Japan Pro Wrestling World's Strongest Tag is a tournament, that is not held, I guess, or it hasn't been held recently, so, okay, um, the NWA International Heavyweight Championship is currently held by Yoshiaki Yatsu, the NWA International Tag Team Champions are held by Goro Surumi and Brazo de Oro, uh, that's kinda cool, I guess, the NWA United National Championship is held by Toshiaki Kawada, uh, the PWF uh, World Heavyweight Championship is held by Kanichiro Tenryu, uh, and the PWF World Tag Team titles are held by Rusher Kimura and Shunju Takano. Very, very cool. Um, from there, I'm not sure who the biggest companies are. Who's the sixth company in the world? Oh, it's like, it's, oh, it's a joint promotions? Really? Wow. So joint promotions is the UK, uh, is the UK territory, uh, I believe of the NWA. Um, that's actually very cool. Uh, I didn't know that. The JPUK heavyweight champion is Drew McDonald, and the JPUK cruiserweight champion is Mike Bennett, but it's I know it's not that Mike Bennett, clearly, um, but it's just very entertaining, I think, that that is the Mike Bennett they continue to show. 
uh, all the fucking time. It's it's just a fun, fun little gag here in, uh, you know, Ville. Oh, WCCW still exists. I totally forgot about that. WCCW, you can take a quick look at their champions. The NWA American Heavyweight Champion is Hector Guerrero. The NWA American Tag Team Champions are Kevin and Kerry, the Vaughn Ericks. Excuse me. The NWA Texas Brass Knuckles Champion is Buddy Landell. The NWA Texas Heavyweight Champion is Bill Dundee. The WCCW Television Championship is Rob Fuller. And yes, it's that Rob Fuller, as in Colonel Rob Parker. Uh, and the current WCCW six, World Six-Man Tag Team Champions are Kerry Von Eric, Ricky Morton, and Rocky Johnson. Very kind of fun, I guess. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, the eighth company in the world is Stampede. Uh, I'm not sure who Stampede has at this point. Uh, their British Commonwealth mid-heavyweight champion is Ron Ritchie, who I've never heard of. Uh, their Stampede International Tag Team Champion is Ron Ricky and Mark Han Singh, who I do know. I do know Mark Han Singh, because that's Mark Sh Mike, Mike Shaw, also known as the Bastion fucking Booger. Um, dear God. Uh, and the North American Heavyweight Champion is Keith Hart. Look at him in all his glory. Look at Keith Hart. Embrace him. <laughs> Keith, just a random fucking guy. Hart. Um, yeah, he's held that belt for fucking ages. Awesome. Uh, the ninth company in the world is this one, the UWA. It is the Mexican company. Wow. The most successful outlaw promotion. Uh, oh, many wrestlers defect from EMLL. Struggles against the bigger EMLL. Well, not anymore. Oh, they're the fifth company. Oh, they are. Oh. Oh. Um. Oh. Uh, let's look at them then. Championships, Mexican National Tag Team, Negro Casas, and SMS1. Uh, the Mexican National Trios Champion are Brasa de Oro and La Fiera El Te and El Tejano. Uh, and the NBA World Light Heavyweight Champion is Dos Caras. Alberto Del Rio's Pop Pop. Uh, back to where we were over with the Universal Wrestling Association. Their champions are Lismark as the UWA World Heavyweight Champion. The UWA World Junior Heavyweight Championship is held by El Sino. Uh, the UWA World Tag Team Champions are held by Tony RC and El Sino. Uh, the UWA World Trios Champions are held by Villano 5, uh, Volcano, and Fishman. And the World Women's Championship is held by Esther uh, Marino, uh, which, you know, good for them. And finally, to round it out, uh, the third, I guess the fourth technically biggest American company in the world, um, it's the AWA. It's the AWA. Uh, so the international television champion is Buzz Sawyer. A lot of love for Buzz Sawyer all around. He's winning a lot. He's got a lot of different belts on him right now. He's a he's a big old television champ boy. Uh, he's actually really fucking over apparently. Jesus. Uh, the world champion is Larry Zabisco. You can kind of see the people who they've had it on. Um, yeah, they took it off of him when I signed up Martel to me and my tag division. Uh, the world light heavyweight champion is Steve Regal. This belt is never defended. It's fucking hilarious. Their last defense was like almost two years ago. Um, the tag team champions are Rocky Johnson and the masked superstar, also known as Bill Eady. Uh And the world women's champion is Linda Dallas who won it, I believe, when I signed up Cat LaRue. Um, overall, I'm not sure what else to show you guys. Maybe some women's stuff, All Japan women's, I could go through really quick, because I kind of just use them for all my women's talent. The All Japan Women's Championship is Mika Komatsu. The All Japan Women's Tag Team Championships are Crane Yu and Yumi Aikishida. Uh, the Japan Grand Prix has literally never been contested. The WWA... The WWWA All Pacific Champion is Nori Norio Tatino. 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 The WWWA World is Itsuki Yamazaki, and the WWWA World Tag Team Champions are Nancy Kumu and Mika Komatsu. Fun. Um. Huh. Anything else necessarily that I'm looking for? Not really. Um, the world is in an interesting place. Um, I think, uh, we're definitely looking very, very good, of course. Um, I'm glad I could make this video, kind of, and just talk a little bit about what's going on. Um, if you have any questions about the save, um, drop them in the comments below. 
um, just in general, because I could I could talk about this save for hours. I love this save. It's my only off-screen kind of save. I love kind of sharing it with you guys at the end of every single year because it makes me feel great. Um, look out for some of these names. Probably, you know, these three, possibly. Maybe not Hall yet, but almost certainly Kurt's coming, okay? I don't know when. Uh, it Well, if JCP tries to sign him, I'm snapping him up, like, instantly. Uh, but he's kind of just hanging out in the AWA and with WCCW, and, like, I don't... I love the Kill the Indies initiative, right? Like, kill every single other company that isn't ours, but, like, I don't know. I kind of like just having other places for people to go. Uh, like, I think... I'm not sure if Ken Patera will go and work anywhere else, but I let Ken go, and I guess he's kind of just going to sit on the bench, which kind of sucks. Um, I'll actually quickly look for the people uh, that I let go this year by checking alumni. Where's that? Alumni. Uh, a lot of these are going to be, like, jobbers and stuff, so i got to try to, like, sort through uh, names of people that, like, I actually know. Uh, Dick. Where's Dick right now? Dick is in the CWF as a main eventer. That's good to see him, you know, still doing some good stuff. Uh, he's a very over person, so, you know, he should be um, doing that good stuff. Um, Ken Patera, as I kind of showed, has not been doing anything yet. Um, how are the Moondogs doing? I let them go ages ago. They're Florida Tag Team and NWA Southern Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. Hopefully with each other, because if not, yikes. Uh... No, they are they are not with each other, huh? Who the fuck is Moondog Rex teaming with as of late? I don't know. He's just he's just winning. I can check that actually, can't I? Uh, with Kevin Sullivan. Oh, and oh no, not Moondog Spot. Oh, he's oh it's just the NWA Southern Heavyweight Championship. Duh, I'm fucking stupid. Um, didn't say tag team. Come on, Tucker. Uh, Mr. T. He's out filming a movie. I really don't have any use for him, so I didn't bring him back. Uh, you can see Shane Douglas and Shawn Michaels kind of just being around. Is that, like, oh, Shawn Michaels. Oh, Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels. Uh, you can see Shane Douglas there, and I think those are really, like, the only guys I've let go, which is kind of, I think, impressive that I haven't let that many people go. Um, but mostly because I'm waiting on anybody who's kind of old or whatever, I'm just waiting for them to retire. Like, I wish Gerald Briscoe would just retire already so I could move him backstage. Um, but anyways, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Of course, leave it down below. Uh, anything you want to know, I'm going to try to get this up tomorrow uh before i go away because i am going away for the weekend um and yeah overall thank you all so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed i hope you guys are somewhat interested in this little save i'm gonna keep doing it i do enjoy it very much uh and here's to 1987 i'll see you all in 1988 i mean probably in an ecw episode before that but many actually many ecws before that i'll see you in this series in 1988 thanks for watching